Hello, I'm Cheryl Johnson and this is my Master Art class. Today I'm going to talk to you about one of the most challenging things you can do as an artist, which is to complete a commission painting. I just finished this work for my client and I'm very excited to share with you the process of painting it. Normally I paint from my internal feelings and emotions. I like a wide variety of painting and Ever since I've been painting, I've done many styles, techniques, and methods. I'm going to concentrate on this video primarily on how to produce this painting. I'm looking forward to sharing with you throughout the day. I started out my career mostly painting realism, figurative drawings, and stories. I found that this was an excellent way to learn how to mix colors, how to do gradations of colors, and how to capture detail. I've been painting for about 40 years, and I continue to go back to this style of painting. This painting was from my first one-woman show, and the story concept sold very well. People like the detail and the intimate feelings and the expression of emotion. I find that as my careers have advanced, I have moved continually slowly towards abstract. In fact, if you go with the crowdsourcing idea, in my The Other Art Fair show in Brooklyn, the bright colors were a great success. A lot of my work in the recent years have been concentrated on landscapes, and I've completed a very large section of work on secret forests. Now this is kind of a juggling act, but I thought I would share with you a couple of my secret forests because the color palette is so interesting. I tend to produce bright, vivid colors and enjoy the contrast of lights and darks. This painting is primarily composed of verticals and horizontals and is in vibrant colors in contrast to the painting which is monochromatic. I also used oils, and I do like the blending of contrasting colors or following the color wheel from the yellows, the oranges, the reds, and then using contrast close by of the greens. This is another example that you will be able to see the amount of detail. Everything takes time. Building up the layers is the process that I find the most enjoyable. I also wanted to share with you some of my earlier works so that I could share the common elements in the paintings. This painting, if you were to look at it closely, is almost like an abstract work. Also understanding the composition, the movement, the light, the shadows, and the darks and the light. It's very important as you create a painting, whether it's an abstract or a realist painting, that you consider balance and symmetry. This painting, the center of interest is coming to here. When you break up a painting into the quadrants, the center of interest will move to different areas. So actually you have two center of interests in this painting. I will be sharing the center of interest for the abstract painting as well. Well, it's the next day and I wanted to talk to you about the commission painting. I'll give you a little bit of history and background. The client that I'm working with purchased one of my paintings online, and boy was I thrilled. And then when she received the painting, she contacted me and said she'd like to commission me to do another painting. That is really a challenge and exciting news for any artist to hear. I asked her what she was particularly interested in, and she said that she would appreciate it if I would send her a proposal and some samples of my other paintings. Of course, I quickly put together a proposal and sent her four or five works and included various sizes and prices. I selected four or five paintings with the colors that she liked, and I hoped that this would meet her expectations. Within a few days, I heard back from her, and she really liked several of them. In particular, she liked one called Wonderland Rabbit Hole, which was more angular than the painting Spring Yet Do I Marvel that she purchased. This gave me some things to go on. I continued talking to her and discovered that she'd been working with an interior designer and she had purchased new furniture and fabrics and had new carpets and wall treatment done. 
this is very interesting to me. And I asked her if she could go online to a couple of the paint sites and pick out the colors that matched her choices. These are wonderful tools and I suggest you take the time to look at them because a few of them will allow you to actually go in and see complementary colors and values and hues of one color. It's an excellent way to work with a client and to communicate the color choices. I really liked the colors that client had chosen and I was excited to do a monochromatic scheme. The client settled on about six colors and then I went directly and purchased some color samples, the actual paint samples of her walls, and I also purchased some oil paints that I could mix to match her colors. I wanted to create some individual swatches that I actually applied the paint that she chose. The color samples that she chose I also picked up so that I could use as reference. I used the color samples as a guide to help me in mixing my oil paint. Now comes the exciting part. I have purchased oil paints that are close to the clients, but I will be creating my palette based on her color selections. I have created over here paper with the different color pieces on it, which I will be matching my oil paints. I take my time in the mixing process and I really enjoy adding and subtracting colors until I get just exactly the right color. It is a time consuming process and the process of adding and subtracting colors and building a supply of paints is very important. When I have a large quantity of paints prepared, now comes the fun part. Here I am simply spraying Gamasol across the surface of the canvas and then adding paint to make a wash of colors across the surface. Here you can achieve beautiful textures and tones and gradations. I am painting a diptych which required me to paint both canvases at the same time. Take the time to really blend your colors, adding and subtracting as you go along. Now is the time to move the canvas to the easel or the wall where I can look at the color choices and see if I'm happy with the color match for the client. I've determined that I need to add darks and light at this point. And so that is where the exciting part of being an artist really comes to play. It is important to choose your colors carefully and determine how to make the color mix. Mixing color is a challenge for all of us. There's nothing more frustrating when painting than not being able to mix the right color. When I first started oil painting, it didn't matter what color I wanted, it would kind of turn out like mud. Create a mixing medium by using a special combination of linseed oil, poppy seed oil, and other paint thinners. I'll share that with in another video. I prefer Gamblin Gamasol solvent as it is low odor. I mix the oil paint with Galkid or Galkid Light to speed up the drying time. Galkid increases the fluidity and speeds drying time up to 24 hours. Color has three main parts, hue, value, and saturation. Understanding color can become pretty complicated, but you can either lighten the color by adding white, or you can darken it by adding black, or you can add other colors to it, such in this case, I wanted to change the hue and I added blue. I prefer to mix a large quantity of paint so that I will have enough paint to work with as I continue through the process. It's important to really check back often on what are the colors that the client has requested, adding your darks and lights. I will use a palette knife or a brush and add them freely, mixing right on the canvas. Take your time. I have found through the years that the more I paint, the more joy that I find. Painting 
is an internal experience. It requires learning various skills and techniques. My favorite medium is oil. I really am a visual learner, and so for this portion of the video, I thought I would just demonstrate some of my techniques and point out some of the things I do. Right there, I added pure pigment paint directly onto the canvas, and I'm blending it using Gamasol. I also will use a palette knife to apply larger portions of paint. I always am careful to make sure that I place the paint in several different areas to carry your eye around the canvas. You can always blend it later. Now is a quick little demo that you will see some of my techniques, perhaps as a teaser to whet your interest for what will be in the next video. The process of painting is what I really enjoy the most. I love creating layers. I love using the palette knife to put colors in various places. I also like to take Gamasol and use brushwork and dip my paint into the Gamasol and then put the paint in several different areas in a light wash. This is in fact a diptych. Each painting is 30 by 48 inches and 1 and 3 eighths inches in depth. There really is a lot of detail and things of interest that I think you'll enjoy in the next video. Plan to watch for the next video coming and make sure you give me your comments. And great news, I showed it to my client and she loved it. And that's always wonderful to hear. That represents a very small segment out of the video. I accomplished painting the painting in approximately two months. And there were several areas that would be so interesting to share with you about layers and glazing and color mixing. And this is where I want to ask you a favor. Would you please send me an email to sherry at cherylbelsonartist.com or make a comment in the section below. I would really like to know if you'd be interested in having more videos of this type. I'm contemplating uh, creating video classes and uh, selling them for a very nominal fee and wondering if she would be interested. Thank you so much for taking the time and don't forget to subscribe and do the thumbs up. Thank you so much.